Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary, my friends. We have yet another amazing guest on this morning, uh, and I couldn't be more happy to be here with you on this beautiful Friday morning. Oh, my Lord. Friday, Friday. Uh, you know, for so many of us, Mondays and Fridays are uh, the lows and highs of life. And um, I have to admit that so often uh, as an entrepreneur, the days all run together. And before you know it, it's Friday and Monday, and they all sort of feel the same. I had a good friend back many uh, years ago who told the story that he um, got into entrepreneurship in owning his own business because when he would um, be working and, and coming home at all hours, not spending a lot of time with his uh, kids, his, I believe it was his daughter would always, would always ask, is it Saturday yet, daddy? Is it Saturday yet, daddy? And so he decided to uh, build a business around the concept that every day is Saturday. And so again, happy Friday. Um, hope, hopefully you all have an amazing weekend, an amazing Saturday, and are able to make uh, all of your days feel um, the same uh, in a good way. And with that being said, let's get into our guest, a quadruplet mom. Holy moly, talk about kids. I think she can relate to that. Uh-oh, just got my text message. Just got my text message. If you are looking for a little reminder every morning, text WUL to 813-296-8553. That's not scripted. It's, I just actually just forgot to silence my phone there. And there my notification is going off. It's got a nice little link in there that comes right to your text. You can just click it right there inside. You can see it's the same thing every day. No spam. No BS. Just a nice little reminder with a link that you can click right on over to watch the show live every morning, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. With that being said, quadruplet mom. Gains 280,000 followers in one month. What? Oh. She gets a hat throw before she even comes on the show. <laughs> Sherry, welcome. Thank you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Tomorrow's going to be Saturday. It Happy is. Saturday. Yes, my kids are looking forward to the Saturdays. Could you relate to that? Uh, you know, I have not had a job in nine years. So every day for me is a, like a weekday, but you know, it's based on daddy's schedule. It's when he's working that they, um, but yeah, mama's been home for nine years. So well, so maybe your husband one day, um, may enjoy a little more time at home as well. Um, unless that's not your plans. I'm interested that's to the plan. <laughs> what got you into this. So tell us what, yeah. what led you here? What, what, yeah. what have you been looking for? And do you, what have you found here? Yeah. So, um, literally I have always thought, so my, um, I'm an affiliate. I've been in the technology industry for, uh, 20 years, nine of them as an entrepreneur. Um, but I've always told him like, we got to figure something out online. Like online is where it is. You know, I sell technology services. Um, we actually started a business back in 2017 um, selling. So he had quit his biotech job. We started a business and it was <laughs> selling garbage, to be honest. It was liquidation merchandise, uh, you know, in a 10,000 square foot dirty warehouse. Um, so we were together for five years. Um, then we ended up closing the business post COVID because the cost of everything was ridiculous. You know, the product was garbage and the costs like literally had gone up almost 40%. Um, just during that time frame, And I was like, okay, the numbers are not working anymore. It, we are, we're done. So he went back to work in biotech and, um, and then my business, actually one of the carriers that I work with, they terminated their affiliate program back in the spring of last year. And I was like, you know what, it's time for me to get back to work. So, um, you know, initially started just moving customers around to increase that revenue again. And I was like, there's got to be more. And I was actually sitting in the gym one day and an article popped up about how this mom was making $60,000 doing affiliate marketing. And I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so I started looking um, just online and, um, 
you know, that kind of went to the back burner and I had started looking for other things. You know, I signed up for app and I was like, oh, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to just start a customer service, you know, business. I'll log in. I'll just work a couple hours a week. We'll, you know, replace that income. And he was like, Sherry, how much does it pay? And I was like, it's like $20 an hour. And he was like, that is not worth your time. You know, and it was just a good reminder that some things are not worth our time. So I just continued to look and I had actually had I don't even know who the company was, but had a meeting with somebody else who had a, you know, teach you how to be an online affiliate. And uh, they wanted to know my credit card information and how much my card payment was. I mean, it was like all this personal information. I was like, okay, that is crap. I'm not, you know, so that's when I found uh, my husband was sending me recipes online and, you know, it popped up on my feed and I was like, okay, what is this? You know, talking about how she was making thousands of dollars a day from home. And I was like, well, I make a good living and I'm not making that. So it definitely got my attention. So you were doing affiliate marketing of some sort even before this? So not and nothing online. So like in my industry, we call them partners or agents. Okay. So like okay. I sell communication services to businesses and I get paid a monthly residual for all oh, of the customers. Kind of like insurance, where you're an agent. Kind of like insurance. Get... Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and like... so, so the the company that you were working with did away with its agent program, if you yes. will. One that of happened them. to my that happened to my uncle when he was an agent for Nationwide Insurance, actually. Oh, you back? So that happened to my my. Can you hear me? For a second. Yeah. No. Looks like you're back now. You got calls coming in or something? Okay, oh, I, hear I lost you, Dave. Well, log out and log back in then. Log out and there you go. Leave and come back in. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh, rebooting the system is the only way to make it uh, make it happen. Um, and is usually if you're having technical difficulties of any sort, whether it's with your TV, your computer, your phone, any anything, uh, usually rebooting is the best way to solve that problem and will solve the problem in a lot of instances. Um, that's a helpful tip. I know it's an obvious tip, but it's a helpful tip for those of you who are feeling a little overwhelmed sometimes with technical stuff. Sometimes the best way when things freeze, my uh, Amazon Prime account was doing the same thing last night uh, and I had to reboot the system and that's exactly what, um, what, what helped. Yes, Melissa, live show, baby. Gotta love it. Nothing scripted here. Uh, all very authentic and non-planned for. Um, just so everybody knows, all the guests that come on the show have no idea what we're going to talk about, what I'm going to ask them. In case you're new, you're seeing it, hearing it, feeling it all with me and with Sherry here for the very Glitches first time. And all. <laughs> so so I, what I was saying was back in the day, my uncle had a very thriving, successful business as an insurance agent for Nationwide, and they did away with their agent program and essentially took their all of their business online because yes. they no longer needed their agents on the floor. And what's interesting about that is, and it sounds like you can relate to that, it, yep. the, the details are not important. What's important that I want everybody to take away from this, at least from what, what I'm thinking about is that you have to be thinking about you. You yep. have to be thinking about your future. You may think that you're in a great situation and you may be more vulnerable than you think. It's one of the reasons why I tell people, even who work here inside of Legendary for us, whether they're contractors or employees, make sure that you're having something to show for your work. For example, make sure you're taking a, a significant amount of your earnings and investing it into some sort of an investment instrument. For example, Warren Buffett recommends index funds, right? going and buying some simple Vanguard index funds. One of my favorites happens to be VOO. You can go right into your Merrill Edge, your E-Trade, whatever account, and buy VOO. It's a bread basket of all of the companies inside of the S&P 500. It's, it's diversified 
just by itself. You don't have to buy Apple, Microsoft, Google. It's a breadbasket of all of the companies, gold and silver, things of that nature. And so when, you know, tragedy does strike, you have income that's growing, that's actually creating real passive income. Yeah. You know, a lot of people call affiliate marketing passive income, and it's not really passive income because you are working. But if yes. you have a, a stock portfolio, which over the last 100 years has, on average, the S&P has grown 10% each year. On average, Google it yourself. Um, real estate. That's a little more difficult to get into. I like the, mm -hmm. a, a simple index fund, some gold and silver. Why do I like gold? Well, because you're 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 not going to go and sell that as easily as you would spend your cash. You would have to sell it first, which there's a spot price, and that's gone significantly up over the past fifty years. Um, and so you, you've got some, now you're diversifying your streams of income. So anyways, you saw, you were familiar with the idea of yeah. partnering agent, being an agent, doing, being an affiliate. And so when you started to, your news feed started to, cause the algorithm started working on you yeah. is what, what it was. It did. Yeah. You, you started looking at or clicking on things about how to make money online and yep. so all of a sudden you started to see lots of probably different people talking about they were making lots of money doing affiliate marketing in lots of things. And it just yes. so happened that you probably clicked on a lot of things. You looked into a lot of companies, as mm -hmm. I think you said, and you had maybe some sketchy feelings about them. As you start, landed on our sales page and then decided to go through our 15 day online business builder challenge, what resonated for you? Um, like nobody was trying to, um, like sell me on anything because when you're an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to do the work, you know, you have to be willing to show up and it's, you know, I, this other company was like, we only take two to 3% of the people who are interested. And I was like, you know, it, well, it doesn't matter because you never know what somebody's going to do. But, you know, mm. anytime I go into something, I'm committed. I was committed from the very beginning. I told my husband, like, I'm a, I don't ask for permission. I ask for forgiveness. <laughs> um, so I just told him, I said, listen, I'm doing this. And he was like, okay, honey, you know, do whatever, do whatever you think. And I was like, okay, well, I'm doing it. <laughs> so, and that was kind of the, the conversation. It was authentic, I think, from the beginning. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, uh, it, you know, Ian says, get, get stock knowledge. Don't buy index funds that you don't understand. Don't buy anything you don't understand, Ian. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, buy, but but yeah, index funds are a smart investment. This is we're we're giving out real, authentic, simple information here. Index funds are the simplest investment instrument that exists. I don't know what you sell. I don't know what you talk about, but what we talk about on this show are simple, reliable trustworthy tools to create success and index funds are that my friend not crypto not whatever yeah. else okay yeah. not what's what's not getting in on the on the ground floor of things see what we don't realize a lot of times is that our business is our high risk investment once we earn the money we want to put it into something really really um, really, really, uh, reliable. Well, yeah. Ian, that's great. I don't sell anything. That's advice I got from a stock millionaire. Well, okay. I, I am, you're getting advice from a stock millionaire right here too, my friend. Uh, and, and that is that, um, uh, the average broker can't beat the system or can't beat the market can't beat the s p 500 they try but buying an index fund is the buying into the top 500 companies in the marketplace tracking that particular index and it's diversifying your portfolio without having to play oh i'll buy this one and sell this one and get in and sell buy low and sell high you buy and you hold over time 
And um, it is the most reliable investment. I know you're not arguing, you're just contributing. I'm having open dialogue with Sherry and you and everybody else because I, I want to really drive this home that what I say on this show is not said lightly. I don't just spout off information. When I say something, it is something that I believe in that's proven. I teach it to my employees. I teach it to everybody that I talk to and I would I would offer it here to all of you. Go do your due diligence. But here's the biggest problem that I see with entrepreneurs, Sherry, is that we don't save for taxes and we don't invest our income. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is at the end of the year, we, we went from employee where somebody was holding funds back for us, somebody was paying our taxes for us. And now all of a sudden at the end of the year, we're like, oh my God, I owe what? I, I just had a great year and I was spending, I'm investing in myself, I'm go, I'm doing all this kind of stuff. And then boom, I get slapped yep. in the face with a tax bill, right? Yeah, so, that happened to me my very first year. And then I got one, my CPA and yeah, we fixed that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I set money aside every month for taxes. I take yep. my, my, my full 37%, which is so hard, it is uh, very hard, <laughs> very yes. hard. And I put it into a tax savings bank account Yep. that at the end of the year, and I actually pay quarterly estimates, uh -huh. but at the end of the year, I have all of the money that I owe for taxes. It's already taken out of my bank account, put into a, my personal or my investments, you know, and it's already there. And now all of a sudden, if I have more write-offs or find more discounts with my CPA, that acts as a savings account, but it's also that money is set aside already. So I have money to pay taxes. The second yes. number one thing, the, the number two thing that I see entrepreneurs struggle with is when they're successful, they don't take the money that they're earning and put it into some sort of an investment instrument. You, you spend all your time spending on you know, luxurious new things or investing in yourself by buying more coaching, more of this, more of that you become a personal development junkie and you don't actually take money and put it into things like index funds yep. and things that, 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 you, that will grow over right. time. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like, well, what do I actually have to show? Well, damn, I bought a new chain. I bought some new clothes. I bought a new purse. I bought a new, I bought a new car, all depreciating assets. Yep. Now I don't have anything to show for it. You've had a lot of this experience already, though, through your entrepreneurial career, I, I, I take it. I have, yes. You know, it's so funny. Like, I get so many comments on my posts sometimes. You know, hey, if you're a freelancer, you're going to be taxed differently. And, you know, it, and it's just like the mindset is so different. Yeah, but when you own a business, there's a 600 write-offs you know, compared to what you have as a, just a, you know, personal 1099. So if you set it up as a business and you invest and you consult with somebody who, you know, is in that field, there's a lot more benefits that outweigh the, um, you know, the tax, I guess, yeah, exactly. people are so afraid. Totally. Of, and yeah. that's, that's one of the companies that we are an affiliate for, when somebody comes through our training, we have a great company that yep, we've worked I joined with through for them. Four, yeah, four or five years yep. and they help you set up in, in a corporation. You don't have to yep. use them. They're a little bit more expensive than if you were to just go online to LegalZoom, but they help educate you. They're there to support you. I was just out in their office in Las Vegas just a couple of weeks ago. They're, they're uh -huh. phenomenal. Tom's got a wonderful operation there. And you're right. You, you get in unbelievable amount of opportunities to write things off and yes. lower your tax liability. Um, and, um, you know, you can be very creative with that. It's, it's a, it's a huge benefit. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of people are hesitant to set up their corporation and go ahead and become a business. Yeah, but, no, it's definitely a huge, huge advantage. I mean, I've, I've heard other affiliates say, I wish I had done it sooner. And I had already been caught in that, you know, in my previous, and I was like, that is not happening again. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, take the so, steps, do the things. I, I wanted to follow up before we get yeah. in a little more into your story here, just uh -huh. with a couple of the questions. I see even Carlos is asking, he said the S and P 500 index funds. Um, 
if I was you all, I, it doesn't matter. I just want to put a bow on this. No matter how much you're earning, I would go and, and I would set up. Now, this is not financial advice. This is just what I've done. For example, I bank with Bank of America and they are, you know, they own Merrill Edge. So you can create and open up an investment account right through them. And the benefit of having an investment account like E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Merrill Edge is that you can buy equities or stocks. Um, and uh, the benefit of this particular setup that I have where Bank of America owns Merrill Edge is that I can see it all in one dashboard. Yep. So I don't have to have, you know, a bunch of things going on and I can actually look at it every day. But um, I would I would educate yourself. I would take some time to get on YouTube and and to um, to just get some general knowledge about what are the benefits of index funds? What are the what is uh, what is the benefit of buying an index fund versus a stock? I'm not saying that going out and buying shares of Apple, buying shares of Facebook, buying shares of of some of these blue chip stocks that exist are, are not also a smart move. They are. I just don't have time to be a stock picker and to uh -huh. be watching the market because I'm too focused on running my business. So I really want something that's proven to be low maintenance. It's also low fees. So the benefit of an index fund is that you don't have to pay a management fee. There is a, I forget what it's called, but it's an extraordinarily tiny low fee compared to if you went down to your local, you know, whoever, uh, Bob, the investment broker, and he's going to charge you 1% of your total portfolio, whether you gain or lose to just oversee and pick stocks for you where you can do a little bit of education on YouTube about what are the benefits of index funds. They're also called ETFs, uh, exchange traded funds, I believe is what that stands for. Yep. And you can go and purchase your own uh, uh, investments. The beautiful part about this and why it's different from a 401k is a 401k is something you may get a match through an employer at one time, and you should be able to take that with you. But I believe there's pre-sales penalties if you were to ever sell or try to cash that 401k in. There now, the benefit of owning an equity, which is what an index fund is, and that's what a stock is called, an equity. You're owning a part of a company. The benefit of that is, is that it's actually liquid. You can sell it at any time if you need to right? Without any prepayment or pre-sales penalty. And so go on YouTube, do your due diligence, l read and, and, and learn about the benefits of investing in dividend stocks or uh, dividend stocks or, or a different type of stock, but you can also buy dividend index funds. There's all kinds of different index funds that you can buy that track specific stocks. My favorite is VOO. It's just the S&P 500. It's a company called Vanguard that just, they manage it for you. Vanguard's got lots of different uh, index options, but VOO tracks the entire S&P 500. When you buy one share of it, you own a portion of every company inside of the S&P 500. And there's just over 500 companies in there. Uh, and it's, it's, for me, it's been the easiest, simplest way to start investing. And if you look at all of the, um, you know, the most successful entrepreneurs who are looking for safe investments, they're also investing in index funds. We lose a lot of money by having shiny object syndrome and going and investing in bullshit and crypto, you know, shit coins and all this other kind of stuff. We become seminar junkies, personal development junkies. While you're investing in yourself, make sure you're also investing in your future financially by taking some of the money that you're earning or potentially spending on more training or more coaching or whatever from the guru gauntlet and actually invest in your future in a tangible way so you have something to show for your work. Now, back to... Um, your story. So a lot of people know you. They're shouting you out here in the comments. How did you create a following of 300,000 followers on social media in such a short amount of time? I, I, really, I don't know. I guess providing a ton, I try to provide a ton of value in my um, 
in my reels. And I spent a ton of time before, you know, I didn't launch my business. I didn't start posting on social media until October. I took the challenge in June, but I spent tons of time and I, I just counted them. I read nine mindset books before I ever posted a reel <laughs> because I was like, I, when I, I'm committed, but I want to know how to do this the right way. You know, I, I tell my kids all the time, do it right or do it twice. Um, mm. And I didn't want to get frustrated and not know what I was doing. So, I, I mean, I literally, I can't tell you how many hours and hours I spent watching the videos. Um, and then I like watched all the very successful people in the industry. Like, what were they doing? What were they saying in the reels? What did their captions say? What were their hooks? Um, you know, so I like, I spent a ton of time doing research on what was working and what they were doing before I ever launched my business. And so, you know, people are like, how, how the heck did you grow so fast? I did a ton of preparation before I actually started posting to grow. You, I mean, you also invested in education right here as well, not to gloss yeah. over that. I mean, you yeah. took our challenge. I believe you invested in our blueprint. So I, I did mean, and I would do it over again a thousand times. <laughs> like, I feel like if you, when you see somebody and they are doing something and you want to be successful doing the same thing, do what they're doing, you know, take the same course, follow the steps that they have. I mean, they've laid the roadmap for you. So yeah. uh, that's what I did. Yeah. And I also joined a mentorship group, which I think was a big key to that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them and there's a lot of different resources. The most important thing is um, launching, right? Uh -huh. Do you, yeah. do you, what were your limiting beliefs? I mean, you're clearly in, in a person who's not afraid to educate yourself. You're not afraid to clearly do the work. Was there yeah. a part of you that was reading nine books because yeah, you wanted to get ready to, you know, be fully mindset bulletproof, but was there an element of fear in there that you really were avoiding launching? And you know what? Yes. I was like, Oh my God, I do not know if I want to be on social media. Like I am a very, like, I don't like, we've always been private. And so I was yeah. like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to put my like everything out there. And I was like, okay, you know what? Get over it. I mean, literally when our quadruplets were born, they did three different stories, you know, WRAL news stories. Um, Forgot and I was like, quads. yeah, I mean, you Google my name and you're, you're finding three articles on, you know, WRAL about my family. So I was like, it's already out there. It's, uh, you know, so I was just like, okay, I, I really had to get my mindset. Like, okay, I, I can be in front of the camera. You have value to give. And so yeah. I think that was it. So you, there was, I mean, it's a gift and a curse, right? Yeah. To be so motivated to want to learn, to be so motivated to, um, you know, be, be willing to take in information, to, to have a desire to grow, to know it all so you don't mess it up. And yeah. it can really be a procrastination um, in disguise, yep. disguised as. Now, I will tell you, though. Yes, it is. I'm by, I, my kids were on spring or summer break, too. And I don't know if you try to work at home when your kids are home, but like when my kids didn't go back to school till almost September. So, yeah. you know, like trying to record videos when they're here sure. is a train wreck. So, you know, part sure. of that was, hey, I'm, I'm going to wait till they go back to school so I can actually focus, know what I'm doing. And we were actually leaving to go to Universal in September. So I was like, as soon as we get back from Universal, that is when I'm starting. And that's pretty much what I did. And, and I'm only bringing this up just because we have 558 people who would love your success and they're probably, and they may be thinking, do I need to read nine personal development books before no. I get ready to start, you know? No, definitely no. <laughs> but for me, I was like, I, I have to, I mean, Dave, I, I'm 47. So like figuring out how to create a reel was like, yeah. I mean, it took me, I don't know, like an hour and 30 minutes to create my first reel because I, I had no clue what I was doing. And it's funny because in our other business, like I did some Facebook marketing, um, but it, it was very minimal. And it was, you know, I, I was only in this certain area. You know, when you're online and you're promoting products, especially digital, digital products, you have a worldwide reach, um, you know, so yeah. it was just a very different. Um, yeah. So it took me a long time to figure out like how to add captions 
I was like, yeah. how are they getting that scrolling screen? I mean, I even called it that, like a scrolling, and they were like, oh, that's captions. And I was like, I mean, it took me a long time to just figure that part out. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and everybody's going to have their own um, process to get ready to get ready. And yep. I, I, that's the kind of driving point that I want to wrap this thought up with is that, you know, we are all going to have certain, our own unique set of, you know, kind of approaching this and a set of, of gifts and curses that are going to come up for us. Uh, and, um, and, you know, it's just important to honor whatever you feel is right for you and to avoid the comparisonitis, the seduction, the romance of, of, yes. of, you know, listening to somebody else and saying, I need to do exactly what they did before I get ready. Success does leave clues. It can also keep us in a, um, it can also kind of be a trap. And, and mm -hmm. so, um, so as you, as you were launching, what were, you know, it took you an hour and whatever to figure out how to edit your first reel, which I mean, yeah, probably, probably some of the best time you've ever invested. Right. I mean, to actually take yes. that time to actually learn, I would say that very thing that you just said, that little clue that you just gave us about the fact that it took you that much time to edit and post your first reel is so it's so revealing for a lot of us to hear because that might be the very thing that you are unwilling to do or that you almost don't do and you quit before the miracle happens. That would be an example. Yes. And so that's why I say, although that might have felt like a long period of time as you were doing it, you probably look back and say, I'm so glad that I took the time to learn how to use this tool for the very first time. Yes. I mean, that would be like picking up a saw at a, at a, at a, at a job site that could potentially do a lot of damage and just expect to know exactly how to use it and not hurt yourself on the, you have to treat that thing with care and respect and learn a little bit how to handle it. Yes. Um, th does this resonate with you that now I'm sure you probably do it in your sleep almost or a lot yeah. easier at least, right? It's much, much faster. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were at the hockey game last night and I didn't have anything, you know, created. And I was like, okay, what time are we leaving? Yeah, you know, I told my husband and he was like 8.30. And I was like, okay, well, I can create my reel in the car then. Like I already have the video recorded. I just need to put the text on the screen. Um, you know, so it took me 10 minutes in the car. I posted it and he was like, okay, are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so so a, lot, a lot of people are are intrigued, as am I, with your quad quadru quadruplets. Quadruplets, mm -hmm. yeah. So how how old are they? Um, they're 11. They'll be 12 in May. Yeah. That's that's interesting that you can just answer how old four, four of your kids are with one answer. Yeah. Well, all of my kids, including my husband, are all May. They're all, all six of them are May birthdays. So, yeah. So, wow. I'm just like wrapping my head around the fact that you literally had four humans um, in you Crazy. and... Yeah. It is totally crazy. And so they're 11. So yeah, I think that we're all thinking, how the hell do you do it? Uh -huh. So what does, I mean, and now it's even more impressive that you did so much work to prepare to launch. Um, what does a day in the life of Sherry look like? I mean, how do you manage your time and where are your pockets that you're fitting this into? So I'm, I'm an early riser. I get up at four in the morning um, on the days that my husband works. Um, he leaves the house by 4.30. So I get up, get him out the door. And then, you know, I spend time writing my captions, um, you know, planning my content, you know, for the day if I haven't already created it. Um, and then basically at 6.30, I stop doing that. I have two different schools, two different carpools. So, you know, one round to school, the other round to school. And then by about 9.15, um, I'm home for the day. I, you know, focus on my other business for a couple hours after I get my first reel posted in the morning. Um, and then, you know, I, I try to have them planned out on the days that my husband works is the days that I record my videos. And it's, he works kind of a crazy schedule, but I just like, I don't do much work on the days that he's home. You know, those are the days we spend together. The kids are at school. Um, so, you know, we go to the gym and go out for lunch dates and do all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I, I do my work when he works. So that's kind of how we 
plan our schedule, but yeah, I, I, I get up early and that's the time that I can focus and have quality time to think. If I don't have that time, my days are not as good. I'm looking at your Facebook picture right here and it looks like you guys got a lot of kids. Do you have more? We do. We've, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have a 23 year old stepson. Um, and then this is, this yeah. is them. Or this is them early, like some years ago, I would assume. Yeah, it was in 2018. So the baby is two. Um, he's seven now. And okay. then uh, the quadruplets, they're four years, like four years, almost exactly apart. So they That's... were, I think, six then. Yeah. They're adorable. They're Thank so you. Precious. Thanks. Oh, oh your yeah. husband looks like a total stud. He he is. <laughs> no wonder you're not. He's working. awesome. When he's home you're you you've you guys are giving <laughs> each other all the attention good for you that's right yeah thank you good for you yeah. so um so wow you you got a you got a nice well-rounded life here going on um i do you know it's full it's it's yeah. fulfilling a lot of kids a lot, lot of husband two yep. businesses um yeah. You know, what are your goals for yourself over the next, you know, year? Like what, what, what do you, what do you see for yourself? Um, and, and how has your life already changed moving in the direction that you want to go? You know, to give us a little bit of a time, not a timeline per se, but you know, how has life already changed and how are you going to continue to change it over the next year or so? Um, yeah, I mean, the plan eventually is to have him, you know, he works 12 hour shifts for a biotechnology company, um, which honestly has been amazing for our family with having the quadruplets, um, because all of that, like literally we paid a thousand dollars out of pocket when we had them and, you know, you know how expensive it can be. Um, but retire him, um, pay off some debt. When we ended up closing the business that we had back in 2017, we closed it in 2022, um, we had a ton of debt from literally unsold inventory. We just literally closed the doors, packed as much stuff as we could, and the landlord still has it. Um, what he's doing with it, I have no idea, but it was just, it was that bad. Um, so pay that off. And then, you know, I mean, I'm all about making memories. I don't care about the fancy things. Just, you know, be home with kids, spend time. We have a two acre yard, so we're out all the time, you know just play it. And we had a boat, you know, it's <laughs> dare to be different, you know, do different things. <clears throat> During COVID, it was like, everybody was staying in their house. They weren't going anywhere. And we rented a place at the beach, had a boat. And I mean, the kids were out of school. They were tracked out. We had, you know, all their laptops and we spent every Thursday, Friday and Saturday in Wilmington at the beach. And we were like, you know what, <laughs> everybody else is hiding, but we're just going to keep on living life. And I mean, great memories and us, yeah, kind of sometimes just go against the grain, do something different. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's ultimately the, I think certainly what my goal in, in dream was when I started, this was to, to sort of detach from the matrix, if you will, or the yep. traditional system of hustle and grind five to six days a week, uh, rest and be numb to the world for one day and then get right yep. back on the grind, grind for another. Um, it's opened up so much more for me, uh, so much more than I could have ever asked for. Yep. What has this taught you about you and how has this either built or reinvigorated identity or confidence within you? Yeah. I mean, like, I think my kids, <clears throat> they'll never really have to work for anybody. You know, they're so funny. They're like, mom, how many followers did you gain while we were at school today? Um, you know, so we're very like, we involve them. <laughs> they're, they're in the videos. A lot of times, um, you know, they know like, Hey, I I've already told them like, Hey, when you turn 13, when, and it's legal for you to have an Instagram account, we're going to figure out a way for you to do this too. Um, you know, so they'll have their businesses and they've, they can do whatever they want to do. Mm. So your your goal is is really not just money legacy, but information and knowledge yes. legacy. 
obviously right. combined with memories inside of your family yeah. at the end of your journey and at the end of each year of your journey, you want to have invested more in your children, in yes. your family memory bank, in their future and their skills. You also want to model for them the type of skills they need and also the pos what's possible for them in this life. Is, is that, yeah. am I reading you right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, cause it's funny that, you know, my little boy was so upset the other day. He came home and it was five o'clock and his little friend wasn't on Fortnite to play with him. And he was like, mommy, he has to go to after school daycare and then he doesn't get home until six o'clock. So, you know, he can't play like I do when I get home at three 30. Um, you know, and so he's, he's seven and he, I have never worked. Like I've never had to leave for a job in the whole time that he's been alive. Um, because I've always, you know, I've always taken them to school. I've always been here. I've always worked when they were at school around their schedules. You know, when they come home in the afternoon, I'm done, you know, and we, we do whatever. So it's very different. And they see that at school, you know, people whose parents are divorced and they're constantly back and forth between different homes and, um, you know, just, they know how blessed they are. Yeah. Good for them. Good yeah. for them. Great, great awareness within your, within your, your household there. So you mentioned that your kids ask about how many followers have you gained today, mom? Uh -huh. So give us some, give us some, some social media marketing t advice here, some experience in terms of growing your followers. Yeah. I mean, it's clear that you understand and know a little something in your journey here about growing your audience. And remind us before I finish asking this question, when, when did you, when did you actually launch? Okay. So I launched on my first account, October 5th, but I had an issue with the connection between um, Instagram and Facebook and it would not let me change my profile. I just kept getting error messages. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done trying to, you know, contact Facebook support. They never answer you. So I restarted a new account, which is the one I post on now on October 28th. So October 28th, um, up until it was literally New Year's Eve day. Um, I had less than 400. It was like 450 followers, I think. And okay. then I posted two reels um, kind of back to back, you know, New Year's um, Eve day and then evening. And I remember waking up in the morning and I had 2,500 followers. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's going fast. And so I, I took a screenshot of it. And then um, like it, it was just, it was crazy. It just kept going and going and going. And literally in the day, I was up to like 68,000 followers. Wow. So you had a, a video, go, you had a video go viral early. I've had five videos go viral so far since, yes, but since, wow. so in the month of January and the first week of February, I've had five videos go viral. Yeah. It's crazy. Man, I mean, there's some, you know, social media marketing gurus out there who, you know, teach how to create content and go viral who have never gone viral. Yeah. And here you have five videos that have gone viral. You really have something that you've, and this is something that I want you to, to really realize here and take this in. I also want everybody to, to hear this, you know, the, we're, we're teaching our, our community here a lot about compliance lately, trying mm -hmm. to teach everybody that, you know, we have to, we have to showcase other results in, in, we have to talk about other things uh, rather than only money, or if you're right. in the health, you, you know, the, yeah. the amount of money that you made, or if you're in the health, say the weight loss niche, the amount of um, weight that somebody has lost, you know, we have to make sure we give full context about the story. Yeah. And we also have to bring it more, bring it, make it less about the results that somebody could get. Because as you said, everybody's going to get different results right. in terms of the final outcome in our space. It might yeah. be the amount of money that you're going to make. And, mm -hmm. and draw it back, bring it back to um, the skill sets, for example, mm -hmm. if you're in the make money online niche that you could develop. And one of the skills that you have, Sherry, that is really valuable and that you really could market is how to go viral. 
you, yeah. you've gone viral now five times, right? That's a huge yeah. result that you've got that has nothing to do with money, right? Which yeah. is what everybody wants who starts a business online. The same way that everybody who wants to, you know, buys a weight loss product ultimately wants to lose weight, but everybody's not going to lose the same amount of weight. Everybody's not going to get the same amount of, of results. And so, um, what skill sets along the way can you also talk about that would be useful for somebody? For example, mm -hmm. how to create videos that go viral, how to create videos that connect with people, how to, how to build your confidence on camera. Talk to us if you were to, you know, if, if you were to, which you are here over 500 people listening live, what do you know about going viral? What have you learned in the last month in some change about creating videos that uh, that clearly lots of people are interested in, watch over and over again? What sets mm -hmm. those particular videos apart from videos that don't get much attention or people don't seem to engage much with? Um, I mean, I think it obviously you want watchability, you know, you want different things happening on the screen. Um, I think a lot of times people come in and, and they're so, um, you know, I mean, and I was too, like, how do I get this text to appear or change, you know? So you definitely need to have movement in the screen, not just, you know, in something that you're doing, but also in the way the text appears on the screen. And I also spend a ton of time, um, you know, people want to relate to you. They want to know your story. They want to know you're a real person. Um, and so I put a ton of like in my captions. So a lot of times my reels are, you know, they're pretty short. Instagram pushes out four to 11 second reels the most right now, but I literally like sometimes I have to remove words from my caption because I've included everything in the space. Like I really, you know, and I get people that send me messages like, Hey, you made me really feel like I could do this. You know, like, so they, they want to relate to you. They want to know your story. They want to know, you know, like who's the person behind the camera, what's your life. And, you know, I, I give them that. I show them my kids. I show them my family, you know, throwing the ball with the dog in the backyard. Um, you know, they want to know your, they want to know you're relatable. They want to feel like they see themselves in you. Are the common themes in your viral videos that you're just using B-roll or a background video of you doing something with text on screen versus um, you speaking in the video? I've had both. So I've had me really? speaking in the video, mm -hmm, like tutorials. And then I've had like literally me putting my hair up in a clip with text on the screen. Um, so it's been, you know, kind of both. But the, the big thing too is engagement. You know, Instagram loves engagement. And so, you know, in my captions, I always, you know, tell, hey, if, if you resonate with this, if you want to learn more about how I did this, you know, comment learn in, in your caption. And then, you know, people are like, I, I didn't want to know. I want to know how you did that, you know. And so when you're engaging, um, and people are commenting and liking your post or, you know, doing whatever, sharing it, um, you know, Instagram's like, oh, that's good. It's, you know, so it continues to get pushed out, um, you know, and I get, I'm sure you might ask me about this, but, you know, the controversial, you have the stupid people that are like scammer, liar, you know, you have all of that stuff too. And so I have like kind of four things that I do with that. I either block them if they're retarded and just stupid and flat out mean because I do not waste my time on people that are stupid. They will never be a buyer. They will, you know, they're, they have no value in my life. So I just eliminate them. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I think people, <laughs> they just get too caught up in what stupid people say. Um, so that's th that you, so. you, you, you do four things with them or did you, or is that pretty much you just block yeah, them? So, no, I, so my first idiot, one is them. I block them. Yeah. So if they're stupid, and, you know, they just make stupid comments. Like I had um, some, I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's so, people are so ridiculous. They just want to be lazy and, you know, not go get a job, go to your job. You know, and I'm like, you know what? I don't have time for that. My job is running my two businesses and raising my kids and you're ignorant. So, you know, I don't have time for you. The other thing that I do is I do a post about it. You know, like I had somebody else tell me that the way to make money was to get a good job and be good at your job and be a decent person, you know? And so 
I'm like, hey, you know, we got to talk about this. I had a job. Actually, I worked two jobs for 10 years and, you know, still in the same position, could barely afford to pay the bills. Um, and then, you know, I took a leap of faith and the rest is history. So, you know, so I, I either block them, I create a post about it, I make some sort of witty comment. Um, you know, when you do that, um, you get more interaction too. Like other people will like your comment to it or they'll reply yeah. to the comment um, or they'll come to your defense. Like, hey, you're an idiot. Who are you? You know, she's providing free information. If you don't right. like it, go somewhere else. You know, so all of those things, um, the engagement portion of it is what makes things go viral. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yeah, you can either block them or you can create an opportunity yes. to, you know, to show your authentic self, to show uh -huh. that you are real, to show that you're not just, um, you know, only responding to positive comments, that you also welcome all comments. Yep. As long as they're not hateful, yes. you, it's fine. I mean, and I'm yep. the same way. I mean, I, I, um, I welcome all comments. Uh, I, 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 t I take them as an opportunity to um, learn about what people are thinking as well. Um, uh -huh. It's an objection that somebody has, so I'm going to address it. And what I've learned is, is that uh, it's probably not going to change the person who made the, the negative comments mind. Right. Yep. It will change so many other people who see right. my response. As long as I don't respond passive aggressively, as yep. long as I don't get defensive, as long as I don't get small and, you know, think that I need to, oh, I'm back into a corner here. Yeah. Just speak, let them know, educate them. And it does so much for the people who are watching. And this is just a side note. You're, this is based off what you just said. Yeah, your your buyers are not always or even usually the people who are commenting or or. or especially not the ones who are loud. They're the ones right. who are silently watching how exactly you right. stay consistent and, and how you respond to people. Um, and by watching yep. something like that, responding to a hater's comment in a graceful way will, will do wonders for your conversion. You're exactly right. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, when people, yeah, but wait till tax time and you have to pay that. And I'm like, or, you know, consult a CPA and set up a business and, you know, do it this way, you know, and then you, you, you're you giving different viewpoints, you're, you're, you know, shedding light in a different way. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm down to earth, you know, we're, and, and so the more relatable you are, the more gracefully you handle those kind of things, the more people see your authenticity. So um, I'm looking for the comment, but I think it was from, oh. Granny Sherry said, what do you do after they communicate? Learn, tell them to go to your bio. So I, one could imagine no. that if you told people, if you've had them comment, learn or yes. um, lose weight or, um, you know, get your baby to sleep at night, sleep, or if you comment wealth, or if you comment, whatever the keyword is that you've asked them to comment. Yep. Now they've you've got a thousand comments down in this viral video. What do you do with that, Sherry? Okay, so I have ManyChat set up, which is an automation system um, that automatically replies based on specific keywords. Um, so you can set them up based on, you know, you can tag them to different reels or to every reel, and then you can put it, you know, I think it's up to 10 maybe different comments, or you can have, you know, if you want them to comment on a keyword that you're talking about something else, you know, you can have them comment specific keywords, but I use many chat and then it, it automates the response. So it sends them a message to their DMS and then also auto replies in the feed. Mm. So. so you're, you're using leverage. This is yes. you know, one of the things that we, that begin to make us a business owner. You know, if mm -hmm. you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you look at that cash flow quadrant, the thing that separates somebody who's an employee or self-employed from a business owner is a business owner uses people and systems as leverage. Yes. And the beautiful thing about online marketing is, is you're mostly using systems, softwares, um, email lists, funnel builders, uh, 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 automatic reply systems like ManyChat to 
do all the the talking for you the the the, the yes. redundant monotonous over and over and over it's the it's the real value of a yes. video that plays online is that the video plays yep. the same perfect way every single time and you don't have to keep repeating yourself or having tons of one-on-one -on -one conversations because the video just oh my gosh it's been viewed 1.9 million times i i can't imagine what i would be like if I had to say the same thing 1.9 million times. Oh my God, would I even have a voice left? No, I wouldn't. But the power of no. video no. is, and this I think, Sherry, I get so dadgum excited because you know people are sitting on the sidelines right now, not even really realizing the power that we have at our fingertips. And you're getting ready to get ready, and you're afraid of what Uncle Bob or Mom's gonna say, or you you know you're your friend over there who's not really your friend, but it, 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 but all, all the while, every day that goes by, we're missing out on this opportunity to have, to use all these tools that have never been at the fingertips of human beings before. I mean, do you yep. know how much a business owner would have had to pay to get 1.9 million or, I mean, how many views have, have your viral videos gotten? Are you, you're in the millions, right? Yeah, one has 9.6 million, one has 4.6 million, one has 3.5, another one has 3. I don't know, 7 and then like 1.2 or something like that. How much would a business owner have had to pay in order to what? have an advertisement that was in I mean conservatively 5 million views right there, but it's more. It's more. I, I think it's 5 not, million yeah. views between like two videos. How much would a business owner have had to pay to have a advertisement be like get in front of times? or be heard by yeah. 9 million people on a radio or a TV? And that's mostly people listening passively yeah. because when the commercials come on radio, TV, we kind of tune out. These people are dadgum sitting there looking right at the freaking phone. They're completely in a trance. They're watching it. They're 100% bought into it. I mean, that that's some of the most valuable advertising that one could ever do. And it's right here, right now. And we are sitting around, stuck in the past, fearful about the future, asking ourselves, is this really worth it? Can I really do it? Get out of your own way, people. Yeah. I'm fired up. <laughs> yes. Do it. You, you got to do it. I, I don't care, friends, if you learn these strategies or get started here or somewhere else. I mean, you heard Sherry's story, went went through the challenge, bought the dadgum blueprints, read nine personal development books while she was on spring break with her kids, you know, launched in October, had some, you know, issues with an account, could it, couldn't get it connected, you know, screwed around with it for a little while, just started a new account. Just, st and then just, just started marketing. You, you, you know, at a certain point, you got to put what you know into practice. That's when yep. the rubber hits the road. And within a month and a half, has got 9 million views grown, you know, your Instagram to 300,000 followers. You've got an audience that people, you know, pray to the good Lord to get a fraction of. And, and man, and here we are, yeah. you know, just baffled, struggling with our own limiting beliefs, with what other people think. And girl, you're just living all up in your purpose. You're just doing your thing. You're just focused on your family. What a way to end the week, Sherry. You know, Thank your you. kids are proud of you. Your husband is proud of you. I'm proud of you. And I just Thank you. You know, am meeting you. Yeah. I wonder if you could end the show just telling us, what have you learned about yourself? I mean, what has this journey reminded Sherry about Sherry? What is this? journey so far <laughs> taught you about what's possible or or about yourself yeah i mean that once you make a decision you can pretty much do anything you put your mind to i mean i think that's that's the hard part that people you know they they hem and haw and no, i don't know what i should 
to do people and what their opinion is. And and I'll go back to one more thing. I didn't tell anybody other than my husband. I said, this is what I'm doing. I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell my sisters. I didn't tell my dad. I didn't tell anybody. I just did the work. And then my mom literally was like, hey, Cher, I saw your post on your aunt's. You know, she shared something that you posted the other day. And she literally sent me a screenshot <laughs> of one of my reels. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I started another business. And, and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'll explain later. And she was like, okay, I have no idea, but you know, people will kill your ambition or your idea before you, and, and my family is supportive, you know, they will do, but in my personal opinion, keep, keep your thoughts, keep your plans to yourself, do the work because they will deter you before you ever start. I'm ready. I'm getting ready to throw the desk. <clears throat> You just said, girlfriend, you just brought it all to a head right there. Yeah. You just, you said everything that we needed to hear to wrap an incredible episode up right there in that last few seconds, right there. That was what all of you needed to hear was keep your damn plans to yourself. Yeah. Stop explaining yourself. Yes. Stop worrying about informing others. Stop worrying about what they think. Stop seeking their approval. Yes. Just get out there and make it happen. Just get out there and make it happen. Yep. Let them ask you about it when they when they see somebody else talking about it. And then when they ask you about it, I love it. I'll tell you about that later. I'll tell you about yeah. that later. I mean, I literally, yep. I had a girlfriend yeah. call me from college and she was like, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> so we're yeah. not, I don't even have time to go into that with you right now, mom. I'll talk to you later yep. about that. I ain't even got time to go into that right now with you, Jennifer. I'll call you back. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm with my kids right now. Yep. Sherry, you're on. Yeah. You're on. Yeah. Julie. <laughs> I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> I'll tell you about that later. I'll. We'll talk about that another time. Right now I'm hanging out with my kids. Yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with this hunk of a husband that I got here. <laughs> okay. We're doing yes. our thing. That's right. I ain't got, he's a hunk. What's his name? He is David. <laughs> yes, he is. Yep. The hungster of the century. He is. Okay. David. Shout David. out to David. I'm with yep. David right now. That's right. I ain't got time to talk. I ain't got time to explain myself to you. <laughs> right. Nope. I'm with David. That's okay. right. Lunch okay. dates and <laughs> Oh, when David's in the house, it's going down. That's right. It's going down. <laughs> okay. Sherry, wow. This has been this has been eye-opening, inspirational. Uh, Thank you're you. a ton of fun. You've got a beautiful family. I wish you nothing Thank but you. the best. You are just getting started as well, which is like so exciting. Uh, for you, for me, I can't wait to have you back here in a, in a month or two and just, you know, check up on your journey and keep talking awesome. and keep teaching and keep sharing with us and just keep doing your thing. Most of all, most of all, if anybody comes knocking, anybody comes calling, you keep telling them, we'll talk about that later. Right now I'm doing my <laughs> thing. Stay legendary, That's right. my friend. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, my friends, you can find Sherry over on Instagram at Amazing Money Marketer. Amazing Money Marketer. My friends. <laughs> I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> Come on, this girl's on fire. This girl's on fire. She ain't got time to tell you about what she's doing. She ain't got time to explain herself. Man. I'm out of here. Have a great weekend. See you back here on Monday for another episode. 10 a.m. Eastern time. 
all the time. Get out of here. Peace.